Hey there. So I wanted to jump on here and um, do a little video about morel mushrooms. Um, it's our, it's my new favorite thing right now. So I just discovered um, morels on our property and I had never done morel hunting before. I have lots of people, no friends that go do it. I've never even tasted a morel. Um, never done any of that. In fact, I'm one of those people that's like afraid of <laughs> see a mushroom in the wild, you don't touch it because you don't know if it's going to kill you or if it's going to do some psychedelic effect, right? So don't touch the mushrooms. Um, but lots of people do it. When we bought this land, we um, a, fr a guy from up here had, had contacted us going, hey, would you mind if we went you know, mushroom hunting on your land? And uh, he was just kind of joking, right? Um, <clears throat> probably half joking because there's lots of it up here. And I'm a big huckleberry person. We go huckleberry picking every year. Um, I keep those spots, you know, deep, deep secrets. Well, morel mushroom hunting is a lot like huckleberry hunt picking where you just don't tell those secrets. It's a don't tell where you find them. Um, however, I'm finding them on my land so I don't have to, to worry about anybody coming up here taking them, right? Because they're mine, they're on my land. If you're up here, I'm, we got a gate. Y'all show up here picking morel mushrooms we got issues just kidding so kind of so anyway um i wanted to share the fun with you so um i had seen some people posting saying oh mushroom season is starting and some people were showing little pictures of you know oh it's coming it's coming and so i thought well i'm gonna get online and find out how how you do this where you find them and, and what the hype is so got online did a little research real quickly very quickly just figure out where you look for for morels at um basically to sum it up they list like a whole bunch of different types of trees but to sum it up it's basically in um wet soil um under deciduous trees deadfall that kind of stuff so along creeks and hillsides where you've got a lot of deciduous trees and um, the ground kind of stays pretty covered and moist and then in spring when after it's like raining so the ground gets to about 50 degrees so right now this is the first week of may pretty prime time for us we've had quite a bit of rain um, temperatures are warming up we had a real warm spell a couple weeks ago and then it snowed and then the, you know and then it came back and it's pretty warm uh, today it's supposed to get up to almost 70. It's been in the 50s the last couple weeks um, and rained for about the last week. So I was like, I think it's per the prime time. So I um, went out, looked through all of our, you can see where I'm kind of in this, this kind of grassy area of deciduous trees. They're all starting to bloom. Um, we've got some buds on some. The leaves are starting to poke out. Um, let's see if I can show you. So the trees are kind of starting to look like, like this, where you're getting young growth on the trees and then others have the flower blossoms. That's kind of when you can start telling that it's time. And let me turn this um, around and I'll show you like the, the undergrowth, what the undergrowth is doing. It kind of gives you an idea of what to look for. Okay, so the undergrowth now is starting, you're getting like real young, wildflowers, the grasses are growing. Um, you can kind of see what this vegetation looks like underneath here. So that's what you're looking for. That's when, this is what tells you that it's time to start mushroom hunting. And this spot has a couple of the half free morels. I have the, the um, black morels as well, but I'm gonna show you these half frees that are just starting to come up. So you see that? So those are what you're looking for. And this this one here is called a half free. And at the end of this video, I'll kind of go over the anatomy and show you the differences. And I will also show you later on um, which ones to watch out for because there's false morels as well. But I my property is full of both kinds. And so this half free and the blacks. And from my understanding, the... Um, the half freeze and the blacks are first, and then next, later in the season, um, will come the common morel, which is kind of a lighter color. So let's, we'll go through and start picking for you guys and show you how it works. So we're gonna let those ones grow a little taller 
they're I mean they're pretty little and you could you could pick those ones as well they'll get a little bit bigger yet so we've seen much bigger ones so we're gonna it's supposed to rain pretty strong the next couple of days and then warm back up so I think what we're gonna do is let those ones we're not gonna pick those three that I showed you we're gonna leave those and see if they get a little bit bigger over the next couple of days and then we'll come back for those the way that you they say you should pick them is in a mesh bag um, up till now we've just been picking them in a colander and you want something that has holes in it so that the spores off the top as you're walking and, and you're picking um, the spores kind of get to fall off and and so if they're in this bag the spores kind of fall off and you're kind of replanting them as you walk around and then not to cut the whole stem just kind of take the first little top part of the stem and leave the rest that's in hopes that they'll reseed and re and regerminate and and the spores will kind of do their thing and, and you'll have more to pick later um, some of that probably is is wives tail and some of it probably has some some clout to it. I'm not going to, I've only been doing this a couple of days, so I'm not going to voice it to that, but I figure you can't go wrong with etiquette, right? It's not going to hurt anything to do it in a mesh bag and to try and hope that it's, it's helping the situation. So, and keeping more, more of these mushrooms growing for later on. So Calvin has found one here that he picked. This is a bigger one. So you guys can see that. So we'll put that one in the bag. So we just found this nice sized one here and so this is what you're looking for to know that they're good ones is they've got all these little pits and holes they're kind of very porous and, and the holes and pits are really deep and they're black that's how that's one of the ways to know that you've that they're a real one versus a false morale and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick it right here at the top of the stem just take that much with us we'll put that in the mesh bag there and then you'll see there's a couple more down here these ones kind of look like they're a little dry yeah and so we're gonna leave those ones um, just so that they can you know regerminate because they're kind of dry anyway and drying out so we kind of missed missed those a couple days ago when they would have been in their prime and so we may as well just let them do their thing and regerminate themselves When you're out hunting for them, you want to walk pretty delicately, pretty slowly. Really watch where you're walking because you'll you'll totally miss them. So a lot of uh, one of the things that I was watching and reading was that um, if people don't find them, it's usually because they're not looking closely enough, or they're either at the wrong time of year or in the wrong area. But I can totally see how if you're not walking really slow and paying really close attention and being very careful where you walk, because you'll end up stepping on them, you'll miss them. So I don't know if you guys can see, but there's one in here, and I don't know if you're gonna catch it, but you better watch really closely because there it is. And see how they hide in there? Super easy to hide and miss. Got a snail having a little snack there. So I'm just gonna take the top here Leave that rest of that for that snail to, to eat. There you go. Find a good one. It's a little half, it's called a half free. And I'm going to show you guys how you know the differences and, and what the differences are. We found some false morels. So I want you guys to see these to kind of know the difference in how they look. You'll see that the tops are a lot more smooth. And sometimes they'll be kind of wrinkly. Um, kind of see the difference between the false and the reals. You don't want to eat the false. They're extremely deadly. So I don't, don't eat those ones. ones. So, he, so here's a here's a false. And so it's kind of, you'll see how it's kind of shrivelly. I've got a couple sitting down here. There's kind of a big patch of them here. So here's some. The false ones, these are kind of in rough shape, but um, I kind of give you the idea. So see how this has, see if it'll focus on it for you. They're smooth, they're not pitted. Um, and sometimes they'll be not necessarily smooth, but they'll be kind of like this one here that's coming up. And see how it's all wrinkly? So people kind of confuse that wrinkly head 
I just took the head off, but you kind of confuse that wrinkly head with the true morels, but you'll see that they don't have pits in them. They're just kind of wrinkled like. And so the other way you can tell is when you break these open, can you hold this, Calvin? Yes, please. Yep. Can you hold this and show right here? Okay. When you cut these open, the top, the umbrella, see how the umbrella is attached directly to the top of the, the cap. And then the stem is full and solid. The true morels, Reagan grabbed one here, the stem is completely hollow. There's absolutely, and when you cut it in half, the stem was actually connected halfway down the cap and not to the very top of the cap. That's why these are called half free. Okay, and then we will show you the, the regular morels later. Hopefully we find one um, over there's a patch of them that we got a bunch yesterday. So hopefully there's some there. And those are completely hollow and the cap attaches to the stem at the base. So these are called half free because the cap, the stem attaches halfway up the cap and the, the rest of the inside of the cap is hollow. So the false morels, there's nothing hollow and the cap attaches all the way to the top of the cap. So don't want to eat these. There's another false morel here. See how the cap is different? And then right over here next to it, you'll see half free morel. So you can really see the difference in their caps. There's that one. It's all pitted and black. And there's this one. So this is the no-no. And this is a half free. Some people don't eat the half freeze, some people do. Um, some people say that they get a little bit of stomach upset still from the half freeze. We've eaten them, quite a few of them actually, a very, a large amount of them actually, haven't had any issues. Oh, and then Calvin just found, I found it. oh, Reagan just found a black morel. So here's the anatomy of a black morel. See how the, the cap here goes all the way to the stem. And so here's the difference between the half freeze that's a pretty small half free, but just so you know, that's the half free on this side, and this is a black morel. And so I'm going to cut these open for you guys so you can see the difference on the inside of these. Okay, so I've cut open the black morel, and you can see that it's hollow all the way up through the cap and that the cap connects to the stem. And so that's a black morel, and they're quite a bit bigger than the half freeze. This is the half free, and I broke one of those open for you guys before. So on these, the cap hangs over just slightly, and it attaches right here inside there. And so then the top of this cap is hollow, and then the rest of it is a cap that, like an umbrella, that hangs over. So that's why they call those half free. And this is a black morel. And, and these one. is a false huh? morel. Yeah. Deadly. They say they have, it's basically jet fuel in those. What Don't touch. <laughs> I just found quite a few of the false morels. So you can kind of see the difference in these. They're a little bit bigger. So see, you'll see that they're, they're rigid and wrinkly, but they are not pitted and hollowed. So these are no good. It's kind of a, there's quite a few of them in this area here. And I find that they kind of grow in, in sections like that, in little colonies. So if we find a whole bunch of false right here, then it seems like we'll find some true morels just over a little ways to, the, to one side or the other. So I'm hoping we're gonna find that in just a second. So we just found a bunch of black morels. This one's kind of small, so I think I'm gonna we're gonna leave it, and we'll come back in a couple of days and grab it. Oh yeah, that one's kind of dried up though, so let's let that one stay, Reagan. No, it's over here by It's all dried up. 
let's let it one. let's let it regerminate. Then there's this one. So try not to pick them if you're not sure about them, okay? So there's this oh, one. Oh yeah, so this is a good one right here. Supporter, you can pick that one. one don't want to get the root. Yeah, because there you go. And then there's, and there's one big fat one. One here. Go ahead oh. and pick this one back. Okay, let me open my thing. Ow. Yeah, we'll go one. around, walk around him to go get it. I'm already gonna grab it, Rin. No, you grab this one right here. Mm -hmm. Grab that one, Bobby. See how he's breaking it off at the. Okay, not keeping a, a lot one. of the stem. That's a good one. You see it, Porter? All right, Reagan. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's a very good one. All right, let's see if we can find some more. And while you're out hunting for morels, or even while you're just out exploring the woods, always pick up the trash that you find. Um, even though this is still our own property, I don't drink. My husband doesn't drink Keystone Light, so this has obviously been here quite some time. Not by us. But we're just going to pick it up and throw it away. And we do that even when we're out in the wild. It drives me absolutely crazy when we go out in the woods camping or hot springs and we find other people's trash. For the most part, we'll haul it out. There's been some times where we just simply can't and it's just so frustrating that people do that. Just, you brought it with you, take it back out with you. It doesn't take any more effort. In fact, it takes less because it's empty. So I think we're done for today. We got, looks like about a pound. About a pound of morels for today. It's supposed to get super warm today. It's supposed to get up to like 73-ish and then tomorrow is supposed to be a lot of rain for the next few days. So I'm kind of hoping that um, by this weekend we'll come back out and find a whole new whole new supply of them. But here's our, our load for the day. It's such a gorgeous day out. It's just great to just be outside even. Even if we hadn't found any, just a gorgeous day to be out walking through the woods. Have a good one guys.